Shot in 4K Ultra High Definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Numerous showers and thunderstorms rolling through the area this morning. I'll let you know if this is going to really impact the morning commute. Coming up. We have the WRL storm tracker on the roads, keeping a closer watch on conditions. This is what it looks like right now in North Raleigh. Also a historic decision on the road to the 2024 election. We have reaction to President Biden's announcement that he's out of the race and the work the Democratic Party has ahead of it before November. 4.30 the time right now. So we welcome you inside our WR studio on our Monday. I'm Jeff Hogan. And I'm Renee Chu. It's Monday and it is raining out there. Ken Smith is in early to give us a preview of what the morning commute will look like. Meteorologist Amy Wilmoth is also looking at the impact of the rain. It looks rather widespread right now. It is, and we've had some thunderstorms as well. No warnings this morning, but perhaps you were woken up by the loud thunder that we had across the area. Some of the heaviest rain starting to move out of the triangle right now and into our eastern communities. A look at Wake County. We still have the rain coming down. It's just not as heavy as it was just about 30 minutes or so ago. Down to the south, Fayetteville, you've had some heavy rain, a few thunderstorms as well. Clinton, you have some rain headed in your direction. So this unsettled weather pattern continues as we head into our Monday. We do have a level one risk for today for the area that you see shaded in green. That means isolated severe storms will be possible. So let's talk about the timing with Futurecast. The good news is it looks like the heaviest rain is going to be gone by the time many of you are on the roads. This is 8 a.m. So perhaps the heaviest rain moving into Virginia at that point. At lunchtime, probably getting a break. So if you want to get outside, get some steps in, walk the dog, that might be the best time to do it. But then as we head into the afternoon, we'll have some hit and miss showers and thunderstorms. So it's not going to be an all day rain, but just keep that umbrella handy through the day today. A live look at the gardens. The rain really coming down here in the gardens with temperatures in the 70s in the triangle at 74 in Raleigh. Dog walking forecast just have the umbrella this morning, but we'll have some breaks in the rain on and off throughout the day with high temperatures climbing into the mid 80s. Ken at 432 Amy. Yeah, that thunder did wake me up as well. I'm sure it did for you as well. Our goal this morning is to make sure you know exactly what to expect when you head out on the roadways. We have early reports of a tree down on Dunn Road of our falls of news. Uh, we're keeping an eye on that to make sure it does not affect your morning commute. Elsewhere around the triangle this morning, all the major thoroughfares are relatively delay free as we're looking at things this morning. Uh, we're going to make sure that you know exactly what's going on. We have the WRS storm tracker out there this morning uh, and our uh, Kelsey Coffee is there this morning uh, setting the scene for us. What are you seeing right now? You're in Wake County. Ken, we're not really seeing heavy rain at this point, just a little bit of uh, light rain, but let's give you a live look now at these wet roads. So you can definitely tell already that this will be a wet morning commute. Definitely uh, be careful, slow down as most of the roads are going to be slick this morning. And we are hearing reports of a tree down this morning in North Raleigh. So Ken had mentioned that earlier, we'll give you video now. This is on uh, Falls of Noose Road uh, near Dunn Road. So we're actually on our way there right now we'll keep you updated on that and we just heard that there's about a thousand customers without power here in wake county so we'll be sure uh, to keep you updated on your morning commute throughout the morning kelsey coffee wrl news live in raleigh election day is just 15 weeks away inside of four months right now the democratic ticket is without a candidate President Joe Biden's decision to drop out is leaving Democrats very little time to establish a new nominee to challenge Donald Trump. Biden campaign is fully backing Vice President Kamala Harris. Now, the Democratic National Committee plans to use a virtual call to nominate a candidate in early August. That's when they're planning for that to happen. Now, it could also choose to open its convention to nominations. Biden is, says he'll address the nation about his decision just a little bit later this week. Now, we have team coverage this morning of the reaction to Biden's decision and the next steps for the Democratic Party. We'll start with WRL's Laura Levine, who is at the Legislative Building in Raleigh this morning. And Laura Governor Roy Cooper is on that short list to be the new vice presidential nominee. Jeff, good morning. The race to be Kamala Harris's running mate has 
already started. Speculation began swirling pretty quickly on who that person would be. As you mentioned, a very familiar face to North Carolinians, Governor Roy Cooper is a name that's being thrown out there. We know that he is among those on a very short list at this time as a possibility. It was just last week when he joined Harris on the campaign trail in Fayetteville. Now, the logic behind his potential VP pick boils down to a couple of reasons. For one, he's a Democrat proven to win in a right leaning swing state that could pull more people in North Carolina and conservatives across the country. To be frank, he hasn't lost a race. So political scientists also note Cooper has made it through his political career without any major scandals, making him a safer pick. He's won uh, many statewide races in this state, including two in which he outperformed Donald Trump significantly. So I think there's a lot of reasons why he would be a good pick. But maybe the most important is simply that he's someone that that Harris could really work well with and trust. Now, the last time we asked Cooper about this last week, he said that he hadn't had any discussions about this. We know things can change pretty quickly, as you've seen in the past couple of hours uh, with this and breaking news. We know that he did endorse Kamala Harris last night in a statement. He said that she has what it takes to defeat Donald Trump and to lead this country. He says that he looks forward to campaigning with her. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Raleigh. Get further information on Governor Roy Cooper's prospects as a Democratic running mate by going to our in-depth story at NC Capital of WRL.com. You can also find a link to a special episode of the WRL Daily Download, breaking down Cooper's chances. Kamala Harris says she is honored to get President Biden's endorsement to replace him in the race. In a statement, Harris called Biden's decision a selfless and patriotic act. She says he is putting the American people and our country above everything else. Harris also shared that she plans to earn and win the Democratic Party's nomination. She said, in part, I will do everything in my power to unite the Democratic Party and unite our nation to defeat Donald Trump and his Extreme Project 2025 agenda. North Carolina's Democratic Party showing its support for Kamala Harris. In a post to social media, the party put its endorsement behind Harris. It said putting her against Donald Trump would be a prosecutor against a felon and experience against extremism. WRL also spoke with voters in the Triangle to get their thoughts about President Biden's decision to drop out of the race. I know that Joe Biden has endorsed Kamala Harris, um, but I'm hopeful that we might get another candidate. I think it's the politically correct thing to do. I think for the party, it's probably the weakest can one of the weakest candidates they have because she's just not liked. On WRL.com, you can check out where the VP stands on key issues like abortion and immigration. You can go to WRL.com for full coverage of Biden's decision to drop out and the decision the Democratic Party needs to make to find a new candidate. You can find it all in the NC Capital section. Well, the rain this morning, along with the ripple effects from the global tech outage that grounded flights Friday morning, is causing some problems out at RDU. This is a live look out there right now. WRL's Nick Perlin is at RDU this morning. And already this morning, quite a few flights canceled and delayed, Nick. And Jeff, we're seeing those cancellations and delays, not just here at RDU, but nationwide following that tech outage. Now, we do know that this started Friday and it caused thousands of flights nationwide to be canceled. And that just caused major travel issues for many people trying to get around this weekend. And as the weekend continued, airlines were struggling, but were able to make some progress. But still, passengers that we spoke to at RDU say that they experienced major delays. And today that issue is still lingering. We know over 500 flights are st were canceled nationwide, and here at RDU, we know 12 flights have already been canceled. So we're going to continue to monitor this as uh, air airlines continue to try to recover from that major tech issue. And once we have more information on when those flights will be rescheduled, we'll be sure to update you. Live at RDU, Nick Perlin, WRL News. Covering Wake County, a former teacher arrested on 12 counts of assaulting students with disabilities is expected in court today. WRL has been investigating claims that James Rencher abused students with special needs at East Wake High School back in 2022. After our reporting, law enforcement got involved and charged Rencher last month. The North Carolina Department of Public Instruction says it's investigating the situation. 
Happening today, the director of the Secret Service will defend her job before Congress at the U.S. Capitol. Where you're looking live right now this morning, Kimberly Cheadle will talk about how her agency failed to stop the shooter who tried to kill President Trump last week. Uh, former President Trump. Now, Cheadle has been facing calls to resign from Republicans. Pennsylvania Congressman Brendan Boyle has become the first Democrat to call for her resignation. House Speaker Mike Johnson says he is forming a bipartisan task force to further investigate the attempted assassination. Students on Durham Public Schools year round schedule are returning to class today. This year, four more schools are offering the year round program for a total of seven schools in the district. Anthony Lewis will begin his role as the district's new superintendent August 12th. He inherits a school district that had a rocky few months with protests over salary issues, closing schools multiple times in the spring. A Wake County Senior Center is closed because of concerns about COVID-19 cases. How it plans to keep serving its community without opening its doors. Hunter Biden drops his lawsuit against Fox News, the decision he made just hours after his father's historic announcement. And it is a wet one out there for this Monday morning. This is a live look at North Hills right now. Meteorologist Amy Wilmoth returns after the break with when the sun may return and the risk for severe weather we face later today. Welcome back. I'm meteorologist Amy Wilmoth in for Elizabeth this morning. We have some widespread showers and even some thunderstorms across the area. The heaviest rain in Durham and Wake County has kind of settled down and moved into our eastern counties, but we still have some heavy rain down in Cumberland County, moving into Sampson County. So early morning for the early morning commute, pockets of heavy rain. Just watch out for some hydroplaning. I do think we'll see some improvements as we head into the second half of the morning commute as the heaviest rain starts to move away from us, which is good news, but we will have some pockets of heavy rain through the morning. A lot Look at our tower. We have it lit up in green. Obviously, it's raining outside for many of you, and we'll continue to have hit and miss showers and storms through the day today. Your exercise forecast might take you into the gym today. Highs will climb into the mid-80s. We're working to learn the name of a man who drowned in the Noose River. It happened at Raleigh Beach near the Noose River Greenway Trail and Lock Raven Highway, or Parkway, I should say. Now, the Wake County Sheriff's Office responded to that scene about 5.30 yesterday evening. According to authorities, the man was swimming and he went under and never resurfaced. His body was pulled from the river after about a two hour search. This is the third drowning WRL has reported in this location in the last two months. A man is dead after a crash on U.S. Highway 15501 in Durham. Officers responded to the crash at Maureen Road and Coach K Highway just after 5.30 Sunday evening. Police say 21-year-old Marvin Ricardo Castillo Torres drove off the road and crashed into the wood line. Torres was not wearing a seatbelt. He died at the scene. Hours after his father dropped out of the presidential race, Hunter Biden had a change of heart. He dropped a lawsuit he filed against Fox News last month. Now, the lawsuit was over the network's fictionalized miniseries that he alleged included sexually explicit images of him without consent. It was a dramatized mock trial about Hunter Biden's overseas financial dealings that led in part to his federal tax indictment. Fox News removed the miniseries from its platforms after Hunter Biden threatened to sue. It is unclear if the timing of President Biden's decision is related. This morning, we're hearing from our state's Democratic congressional representatives about President Biden dropping out of the presidential race. Congresswoman Valerie Fushi shared this photo of herself and Biden on X. She wrote in part, President Biden is putting people over politics with his decision, and I look forward to fighting for democracy and freedom alongside the president as he finishes his term. Democratic Congresswoman Deborah Ross expressed her support toward Biden and Harris in a post on X as well. Ross wrote, President Biden is a dedicated, selfless public servant who has always put the needs of the American people first. He continued to do just that and solidified his legacy of leadership and service. She went on to push for united support for Vice President Harris to win in November. The Durham County Democratic Party was among the first chapters in the state to endorse Harris. She's experienced, she's strong, and she's dedicated. So this statement was incredibly easy for us to just quickly write and get out because it's what we thought. Dreams around the party's third vice chair tells us Harris's views on abortion rights, criminal justice reform, affordable health care and several other issues align perfectly with their own. A firefighter is hurt after massive fire in Cleveland. Crews say the fire started in a restaurant 
and then spread to other nearby buildings Sunday night. Dozens of firefighters responded. One suffered a back injury and had to be taken to a nearby hospital. A Wake County Senior Center is closed because of concerns about COVID-19. The town of Wake Forest says the Northern Wake Senior Center will be closed for at least three days. They say staff and volunteers were exposed to the virus. Meals on Wheels of Wake County is offering grab-and-go meals to Friendship Cafe members while the center is closed. They'll be available from 10.15 to 11.30 a.m. in the front parking lot of that senior center. We have very active weather happening right now at 448. Let's get over to meteorologist Amy Wilmoth in the WRO Severe Weather Center. Amy, when I was driving in, I know I saw lightning and there are heavy pockets of rain around the area right now. That's right. I drove through several areas where there was ponding on the road. The good news is the heaviest rain is moving into our eastern counties and out of uh, the Triangle area. But look at all the lightning that we had just a short time ago. That has really subsided. But I know probably many of you were woken up from the lightning. Maybe your dog scared and woke you up. That's what happened at my house. It's all because of this stationary frontal boundary that's just been lingering across North Carolina for the last several days. Here's a closer look at the radar. And we still have some heavy rain along I-95 all the way Way down into Cumberland County into Fayetteville. We're also watching this batch of rain that's close to Charlotte. That's moving to the north and east, and that might move in during the morning commute. We're keeping a close eye on that. Here's a look at future cast. Widespread showers and storms from around the triangle and points to the east right now. That's going to continue moving to the east. This particular model not picking up on that rain that's south and west of us, but again, we're going to be watching that to see if that means the rain's going to linger a little bit longer for the morning commute. Lunchtime, we'll probably get a break from the rain. So if you have some errands to run, you need to do some things outdoors, that might be your best opportunity. Then we head into the afternoon. The heating of the day will have some hit and miss showers and storms, but not everybody gets the rain. It's certainly not an all-day rain, but we will have some of those showers and storms late this afternoon, this evening. From Durham, Wake County and points to the east, you're under a level one risk for severe storms. A level one risk, we'll break this down for you. It's isolated severe storms, limited in duration and intensity. It's a level one out of the five. So it's on the lower end of the threat level scale. I think the bigger threat would be the potential for some flooding. I'm going to talk more about how much rain we could get coming up in the next half hour. But we're stuck in this pattern with a low pressure system here, a steady stream of moisture from the south. And so this pattern isn't going anywhere anytime soon. We're going to be dealing with rain chances for the next several days, but at least it brings a relief from the intense heat that we've had. No uh, 100 degree temperature showing up in the seven day. A live look at Fenton and Cary. You've had some rain. It's kind of tapered off now. Now in Cary, 74 in Raleigh, 72 in Fayetteville at 73 in Rocky Mount. Hour by hour today, we'll have showers and storms this morning. Might get a little bit of a break in the afternoon, but still an isolated shower storm. And then another round of showers and storms, perhaps for the evening commute. Look at the seven day. It stays unsettled for the next seven days. 91 tomorrow, 89 Wednesday. Then we're back into the low 80s for the end of the week. Look at Sunday. Finally able to take rain out of the forecast. Maybe we'll start to dry out a little bit Sunday, Ken. Uh, just maybe. And of course, as Amy just aptly put it, many of you are waking up to some wet roads this morning. Uh, we're not seeing any major delays on our sensors uh, this morning as a result of all the wet roads that you're waking up to this morning. We do have reports of Raleigh police working crashes on uh, eastbound lane of west of uh, I-40 uh, near Rock Quarry Road and also the westbound lanes of Rock Quarry Road as well. We've got reports of a crash on Gresham Lake Road. Again, none of this is having any trouble with your uh, morning commute this morning. We do have the W.R. Baking News tracker out on the roads this morning. Kelsey Coffey is in the breaking news, in the uh, storm tracker, I should say. She's in North Raleigh on I-540 this morning. You can see the windshield wipers going this morning. Uh, we're going to make sure that we let you know exactly what's going on so you'll know what to expect as you head out this morning. Paris Olympics are just days away now and fans are already flocking to get their souvenirs. We will take you inside the huge mega store that's already open in Paris ahead of the games. Starting today, there's a new way to get around Chapel Hill. The trolley rides the town is rolling out ahead of tomorrow's night. Tomorrow's big international soccer game.